Trepanning, Wikipedia article audio. Trepanning, also known as trepanation, trephination, trephining or making a burr hole is a surgical intervention in which a hole is drilled or scraped into the human skull, exposing the durum mater to treat health problems related to intracranial diseases or release pressured blood buildup from an injury. It may also refer to any burr hole created through other body surfaces, including nail beds. It is often used to relieve pressure beneath a surface. A trephine is an instrument used for cutting out a round piece of skull bone. In ancient times, holes were drilled into a person who was behaving in what was considered an abnormal way to let out what people believed were evil spirits. Evidence of trepanation has been found in prehistoric human remains from Neolithic times onward. Cave paintings indicate that people believed the practice would cure epileptic seizures, migraines, and mental disorders. The bone that was trepanned was kept by the prehistoric people and may have been worn as a charm to keep evil spirits away. Evidence also suggests that trepanation was primitive emergency surgery after head wounds to remove shattered bits of bone from a fractured skull and clean out the blood that often pools under the skull after a blow to the head. Such injuries were typical for primitive weaponry such as slings and war clubs. There is some contemporary use of the term. In modern eye surgery, a trephine instrument is used in corneal transplant surgery. The procedure of drilling a hole through a fingernail or toenail is also known as trephination. It is performed by a physician or surgeon to relieve the pain associated with a subungual hematoma. A small amount of blood is expressed through the hole and the pain associated with the pressure is partially alleviated. History Prehistoric Evidence Trepanation is perhaps the oldest surgical procedure for which there is archaeological evidence, and in some areas may have been quite widespread. At one burial site in France dated to 6500 BC, 40 out of 120 prehistoric skulls found had trepanation holes. Many prehistoric and pre-modern patients had signs of their skull structure healing, suggesting that many of those subjected to the surgery survived. Another skull with a trepanation hole was found at burial site Shalagantipi dated to the 5th millennium BC. More than 1,500 trephine skulls from the Neolithic period have been uncovered throughout the world from Europe, Siberia, China, and the Americas. Most of the trephined crania belong to adult males, but women and children are also represented. Evidence suggests that the trepanations were carried out to bring back to life prominent members of the hunting group who were thought to be dead and could be made undead by opening the skull according to the primitive conception of death and dying held by Neolithic people from their beliefs of magic as well as their experience of head injuries during hunting. In the more recent times of post-classical pre-Columbian Mesoamerica, evidence for the practice of trepanation and an assortment of other cranial deformation techniques comes from a variety of sources, including physical cranial remains of burials, allusions in iconographic artworks and reports from the post-colonial period. Among New World societies trepanning is most commonly found in the Andean civilizations, such as pre-Incan cultures. For example, the Paracas culture ICA, situated in what is now known as ICA, located south of Lima. It has also been found in the Muisca Confederation and the Inca Empire. In both, even cranioplasty existed. Its prevalence among Mesoamerican civilizations is much lower, at least judging from the comparatively few trepanate crania that have been uncovered. The archaeological record in Mesoamerica is further complicated by the practice of skull mutilation and modification carried out after the death of the subject, 
to fashion trophy skulls and the like of captives and enemies. This was a widespread tradition, illustrated in pre-Columbian art that occasionally depicts rulers adorned with or carrying the modified skulls of their defeated enemies, or of the ritualistic display of sacrificial victims. Several Mesoamerican cultures used a skull rack, on which skulls were impaled in rows or columns of wooden stakes. Even so, some evidence of genuine trepanation in Mesoamerica has survived. Pre-Columbian Mesoamerica The earliest archaeological survey published of Trepanat Crania was a late 19th century study of several specimens recovered from the Tarahumaram Mountains by the Norwegian ethnographer Carl Lumholtz. Later studies documented cases identified from a range of sites in Oaxaca and central Mexico, such as Tilantongo, Oaxaca, and the major Zapotec site of Monte Alban. Two specimens from the Tlatelco civilization's homelands indicate the practice has a lengthy tradition. A study of ten low-status burials from the late Classic period at Monte Alban concluded that the trepanation had been applied non-therapeutically, and, since multiple techniques had been used and since some people had received more than one trepanation, concluded it had been done experimentally. Inferring the events to represent experiments on people until they died, the study interpreted that use of trepanation as an indicator of the stressful socio-political climate that not long thereafter resulted in the abandonment of Monte Alban as the primary regional administrative centre in the Oaxacan Highlands. Pre-modern Europe Specimens identified from the Maya civilization region of southern Mexico, Guatemala, and the Yucatan Peninsula show no evidence of the drilling or cutting techniques found in central and highland Mexico. Instead, the pre-Columbian Maya apparently used an abrasive technique that ground away at the back of the skull, thinning the bone and sometimes perforating it, similar to the examples from Cholula. Many skulls from the Maya region date from the post-classic period, and include specimens found at Palenque in Chiapas, and recovered from the sacred cenote at the prominent post-classic site of Chichen Itza in northern Yucatan. Trepanation was also practiced in the classical and renaissance periods. Hippocrates gave specific directions on the procedure from its evolution through the Greek age, and Galen also elaborates on the procedure. During the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, trepanation was practiced as a cure for various ailments, including seizures and skull fractures. Out of eight skulls with trepanations from the 6th to 8th centuries found in southwestern Germany, Seven skulls show clear evidence of healing and survival after trepanation suggesting that the survival rate of the operations was high and the infection rate was low. In the graveyards of pre-Christian Magyars, archaeologists found a surprisingly high frequency of skulls with trepanation, although more than 90% only partial. The trepanation was performed on adults only with similar frequencies for males and females, but increasing frequency with age and wealth. This custom suddenly disappears with the onset of the Christian era. Modern Medical Practices The prefrontal leukotomy, a precursor to lobotomy, was performed by cutting a trephine hole into the skull, inserting an instrument, and destroying parts of the brain. This was later made unnecessary by the development of the orbital transit lobotomy where a spike was inserted through the eye sockets. Voluntary trepanation Trepanation is a treatment used for epidural and subdural hematomas, and for surgical access for certain other neurosurgical procedures, such as intracranial pressure monitoring. Modern surgeons generally use the term craniotomy for this procedure. The removed piece of skull is typically replaced as soon as possible. If the bone is not replaced, 
then the procedure is considered a craniectomy. Trepanation instruments are now available with diamond-coated rims, which are less traumatic than the classical trephines with sharp teeth. They are smooth to soft tissues and cut only bone. The practice of trepanning continues today due to belief in various pseudoscientific medical benefits. Some proponents justify the practice with recent research that trepanning results in increased blood flow. Individuals have practiced non-emergency trepanning for psychological purposes. A prominent proponent of the modern view is Peter Halverson, who drilled a hole in the front of his own skull to increase brain blood volume. One of the most prominent advocates of trepanning is Dutch librarian Bart Hugs. In 1965, Hugs drilled a hole in his own head with a dentist drill as a publicity stunt. Hugs claimed that trepanning increases brain blood volume and thereby enhances cerebral metabolism in a manner similar to cerebral vasodilators such as ginkgo biloba. These claims are unsubstantiated by research. In a chapter of his book Eccentric Lives and Peculiar Notions, Esotericist John Mitchell cites Hugs as pioneering the idea of trepanning in his 1962 monograph, Homo sapiens correctus, which is often cited by advocates of self-trepanation. Among other arguments, Hugs contends that children have a higher state of consciousness and since children's skulls are not fully closed, one can return to an earlier childlike state of consciousness by self-trepanation. Further, by allowing the brain to freely pulsate hugs argues that a number of benefits will accrue. Mitchell quotes a book called Borehole written by Joey Mellon. At the time the passage below was written, Joey and his partner, Amanda Fielding, had made two previous attempts at trepanning Mellon. The second attempt ended up placing Mellon in the hospital, where he was reprimanded severely and sent for psychiatric evaluation. After he returned home, Mellon decided to try again. He describes his third attempt at self-trepanation. After some time there was an ominous sounding slurp and the sound of bubbling. I drew the trepan out and the gurgling continued. It sounded like air bubbles running under the skull as they were pressed out. I looked at the trepan and there was a bit of bone in it. At last. Fielding also performed a self-trepanation with a drill, while Mellon shot the operation for the short film Heartbeat in the Brain, which was long thought to have been lost. Portions of the film can be seen in the documentary A Hole in the Head. Mitchell also describes a British group that advocates self-trepanation to allow the brain access to more space and oxygen. Other modern practitioners of trepanation claim that it holds other medical benefits, such as a treatment for depression or other psychological ailments. In 2000, two men from Cedar City, Utah were prosecuted for practicing medicine without a license after they performed a trepanation on an English woman to treat her chronic fatigue syndrome and depression.